Good morning. This is the second day uh, filming this piece that I think is coming out very good. At least I'm happy with the results so far. But I will explain a little bit of the process that we are being dealing with. If you remember, this was all ground metal. You know, I etched the metal with uh, uh, grinding tools to make the detail. We cover, if you remember, we uh, cover uh, the mermaid shape so we can, we have that section all covered in the whole shape and we are just concentrating on the background, okay? The background is very important because this is what's going to give a life to it. So right now, are just a little bit of a, uh, just the color scheme that, uh, it has different blendings. But some of them doesn't make sense because it doesn't tie together. But uh, I will solve that just by adding highlights. The highlights will blend all these details, you know, because this is going to make it, the clouds look like a cloud and the bright areas like a sun or reflection light. So it will be very interesting. In order to do that, I need to use white, you know. But uh, remember, white is, um, is the magic color, but we can tell it's a little bit of trouble color because the pigment is thick, it's hard to handle sometimes uh, the right way. But I think um, Createx develop a great white paint. This is the Wicked uh, Black. This is the new formula for the Wicked Opaque White is 0030. And this is an awesome white. And I'm reducing it with a 4011. 4011 reducer, you know. It's like a multi-purpose reducer for all the Createx line, and it works awesome. So what I did is I put it in my airbrush, a little bit of a reducer first, always the reducer first, so the reducer goes all the way to the bottom of the airbrush, and then a few drops of white. What makes this happen is that um, the reducer mixed with it but since this, the reducer first, it has a better blending with the paint. If I put the paint first, as soon as I shoot out the airbrush, it will come out. So that's the way I recommend it. So I have a little piece of black uh, paper here to test my airbrush. I did just a few strokes to show and test, and I think it's working fine. So I have, I have a good coverage. This is a little bit into the, into the um, translucent side, but that's what I need. I don't like to go heavy, heavy on white, because remember, I'm working with reflections, and the white is only a touch just to give life to it. Okay, so I will start doing some effects, uh, especially in this area, the light area, to bring more alive and as you can see I have like some yellow color there some uh, reference here so I will work on that and blend it as I go okay so saying that I will start spraying so I will first go here and start creating uh, highlights I will grab my template and start playing around with it, you know. Maybe some of these lines you will not see it. Uh -huh. And keep in mind that I've been using Candy. Candy 2O is probably going to bleed through the white, but I'm taking that in my advantage. I didn't spray any uh, 4040, a bleed checker because I want some blending to go through my color. So that's what I'm doing right now, okay? So I need to work close and freehand, doing some dagger strokes, you know, just to, just to be sure that I'm creating the, the right effect. 
This uh, shield it will help me a lot because the random uh, shape is it helps me to create this uh, long effects with the white, you know. So as you can see, the white is absorbing some of the paint, which is what I want, you know. So I will be combining freehand a little bit of the Okay. Sometimes we get a little bit of tip dry, but remember that we need to discharge of a brush. If I have tip dry, which is start building up right now, there are too many ways to fix that up. One of them is by using my uh, brush, you know, clean the brush, clean the tip. But also, if I spray a blast on the paper here on the side, it brings the fresh paint from the inside of the airbrush to the tip. So there's not more dry paint in the tip. So that that's helps, you know. And, and of course, that allows you to, to have a little bit more control when, when we paint. So now, for example, in this area, I will start doing use a little bit of uh, effects for the clouds. Mm -hmm. I will concentrate my light in this point, in this area, so I will basically gonna make it more brighter in there. But I don't like to cover, because remember, the white is opaque, so it's blocking the, the the transparency and the also is blocking the reflection so so I'm trying to give some kind of a cloudy effect when we have this brightness all the focal point goes into that there, but then it needs to blend to the rest, okay? So that's what I'm pretend to do it. Uh, something else that I will use is my texture effects from the first series by designed by me, Gerald Mendes. And um, this is manufactured by Artul. This is a great, great stencil because it allows us to make it the very interesting effect. So for example, I will use the stencil place it where I need to spray, but don't touch, without touching the surface on the edge, I just lift it and put it in an angle. So what I'm doing is I'm spraying and I let the overspray make the effect. So that way it gives me a soft edge, you know, not necessarily a um, hard edge, you know, but it's just enough for what I pretend, okay. You see, it's, it's only in a distance. I concentrate my paint in one area, but the rest is make it used by the overspray, okay. And on top of that, I will add, use a little bit of a freehand. I repeat the same in different points. Okay, I have this area right here that I will do pretty much the same. But I don't like to abuse too much because I don't want to cover all the reflection, you know. So. Remember, once I have some um, either clear, like uh, um, 40, 50 or so, 
it will blend my white into the color that is underneath. So that will help for uh, a better uh, blend of the color, you know. So I can do that and then I can go back and soft it up. It's important that uh, we are able to create fine lines and have a full control with the airbrush. So, okay. Now, um, since I have protect the head, you know, on, on the mermaid, I, I have the freedom to spray over. So this is just part of the background, you know. I don't like to add much of white, only in certain areas, just to give a little bit of touch. Okay. I'm using an Iguara Custom C. It's, uh, the atomization is awesome, and this new formula white from Createx is, is working amazing. So it's a great combination. Pretty much the best of the of the best of the best, you know, good combination of airbrush, professional airbrushes, and uh, a good paint that you can actually um, customize as you need it. Okay, so I hope you guys can see the effects I'm trying to achieve. Uh, I will use another texture uh, effect. This is from the se first series, but uh, regular size, and I will create uh, a bigger uh, glow effect. So right here, and I'm just holding and spraying some, and it just gives me that soft touch right there. Okay, if I keep doing that, I will create more uh, like. Uh, cloudy effects, which is what I try to achieve. Okay, so, and then on top, of course, some freehand, used to give a touch to the edges. I guess this gives you a rough idea of the process, so I will keep going. And next, uh, next time you will see a little bit more advanced background done, okay? See you in a little bit, guys. Thank you so much. Okay, guys, um, I keep working with white color, you know, this uh, combination of, uh, you know, white is the new opaque white formula with the 4011 is working fantastic. But also, I need to be sure that is the right viscosity, so reduce enough, so I have uh, uh, the response that I needed with my airbrush. So what I'm doing now is just doing a little bit of a cloudy effect. So uh, I will do some of them so you guys can see it. It's not a really big deal, but I guess it will be interesting for you guys to see it. So what I start doing is I start by spraying on the side and be sure that I'm doing fine lines. I will actually need to clean up my needle for any tip dry, okay? And what I'll do is I will just kind of a drawing here very fine the edge of some of the clouds, you know, if you see it. This is mini dagger stroke, you know, and then I blend it. Use freehand, you know. It's not really complicated, but you need to kind of pay attention to what you're doing, you know. And of course, when I use my stencil, I can, uh, it will help a lot because all I do is I just hold it, spray, do some kind of overspray right there, and it automatically gives me 
uh, some uh, special effect right there. If I go over on the opposite way, it is like if the cloud is crossing in the center and it gives me a, a light underneath. But of course, if I make a smooth highlights on the bottom, so it soften it up, you know. I can even, you know, continue with a similar effect, okay? And this will be awesome. Since I have a mask here, but this some, is, is a section of the hair crossing over, I will spray some light underneath, so, so it will be a little bit more contrast, okay? So those details are important. Now I will do very similar to it, you know, on this side, because I, I like to have a contrast in here. If I'm looking at this image right here, I have a darker spot by the hand, you know, then some light underneath on the elbow section. So what I will do, I just kind of uh, uh, cover part. L look how far I am from the surface. So and I just spraying kind of in an angle. So it just creates like an overspray and it kind of blocks a little bit of the dark area, okay? So that's enough for me as an indication for light separation. Now I will go back and define a little bit of an edge of a cloud. But as you can see, I'm just doing very, very fine. cloud edge, you know, it's like if, if the light hits it right there, so I'm just doing free and free hand, and then I will go uh, a mist, but going in this direction, so it kind of illuminates what is underneath. I hope you guys can see what I pretend I'm trying to explain. But you know, it's, it's easy. Of course, it requires maybe a little bit of uh, airbrush control, especially for these fine lines, because I'm building up as I go, you know. But uh, the stencils are always a great help. For example, this section looks cool. It has some shading, but I think it needs some interesting in between. So what I'll do is I just place this, put an angle, almost not touching, and just spray some color right there. And it automatically gives me this kind of a softly cloud effect, kind of a nebula. And then if I add this, it will become even more interesting. Remember that I will, on top of that, I will spray some candy over, probably a little touch in yellows, you know, so just to colorize this white, but also I'm considering that this will bleed with the candy color underneath because it has no protection yet. When we have this all done, we apply 4040 as a bleed checker to avoid for, uh, further um, uh, bleeding, you know. So I will do pretty much the same thing here, but now I will do it this way. All I want is light areas. I just remember I need to be very careful with the amount of white because if I apply too much, it's blocking the reflection from the metal piece. So it's like a combination of a the blocked areas, you know, with the, with the white, but also letting breathe a little bit of the transparency and reflection from the metal. You see, I'm building up a kind of a cloud edge. All I do is just define even I, I do like here, like a, some dagger stroke, so blending, and let the, the light go with it, with the color, with the existing color, right? 
Then if I want to define an area, I go very close and kind of draw, let's say in this case, the, the edge of the, of the cloud. Once I have it there, then I blend it with light, like if the light was behind it, you know. And just to complement, I will use any of my stencils. This one is the Cosmic. I will place it here. I will light it from this point down just to give some depth, but very, very subtle. It's just a mist, okay? And it gives me that touch. So it's, that way it doesn't look like a black uh, cloud that is just right there. It gives a little bit of dimension. And I will do the same thing at this end, just to complement with what is coming here. So I will go I let it dry, spray a little bit more. There you go. And then I will go freehand. You know, when it dries, it kind of tones down, which is cool. So it just this is just more about having fun, creating areas with depth, with light, and at the end it will be coming something very cool. Hope you guys like so far what I'm doing. So I'll keep working and show you what's next, okay? Thank you. Okay, guys, as you know, I've been uh, spraying some white. I've been uh, actually uh, doing a lot more clouds and some kind of uh, effects. Very subtle, very um, uh, kind of hard to see it, but I know it will pop out when we spray candy. Because what I've been doing is are doing some little stars and highlights. And what I, the way I do it, for example, star, this, this is a Micron SB, uh, but my paint here is uh, with, the, with this white that uh, Cretex is developing is fantastic. And I'm able to get very close uh -huh, and then create these kind of dots, you know, to resemble some kind of stars. But let me tell you, it's tricky because I need to point out and be precise where the dot is. But this is because the white is very responsive. So once I touch it, it comes out. So it's, it's fantastic what Critex is doing. But now I will show you a different technique to do the dots for the stars on the background. So I will switch to a different airbrush, which is another Micron. And, but here, the paint is a little weak and uh, it's a little more translucent, and I will take off the nozzle head, okay? The nozzle is still there, but the nozzle head I'm removing, okay? So this way, I have the, the air going out, and I will increase the air pressure, so this way, what I have is I will have some dots. So these dots, if you see it, I'm spraying around, and I can go very specific in the areas that I'm looking for. If I go lower with my pressure, with my air pressure, which I'm controlling here, the dots are bigger, you know, and a little bit more intense. You can probably see the size of the dots right here. If I increase my air pressure, the dots are finer. So this way is an easy way to complement the star looks. You know, I have few here. This is water, but still going to have, you know, some of my crazy touch like that. And what I will do later on is I will come back and make a, a glow to make it bright. So this, this is a very simple, easy tip to have a controlled dot which I think everybody gonna love it for similar effects. What I will do next is I will colorize 
my uh, clouds, especially this one's in blue tone. So I'm using another airbrush. That's the convenience to have different airbrushes so you don't need to clean every time, you know, for changing the color. This is a um, custom CH, you know. This is 35.35, okay. Going down with my air pressure. And I will make some candy. This, can, this time I'm gonna use Caribe Blue, which is 4657, of course, candy tool, okay. But before that, I will do a little bit of transparent base. I know uh, we're using transparent base, but we can use 4050, you know, uh, but transparent base, I like it because it's thinner than 4050 and it flows really easy on the airbrush. So I apply a little bit of uh, 4050, okay? Then few drops or a little bit of candy. We need the, the transparent base of 4050 um, as a binder for for the candy, okay? Since the candy has not, it's only the dye has no binder in it, so we need to mix it. I will bubble up, so just to get it mixed. Mm -hmm. There you go. But I also gonna add just a little tiny bit of 4011, just for flow. So just to easy flow, just few drops. It, it cannot be more than 10%. Okay, so let me cover this. I will bubble up again. Because I want to be sure that it will cover. So check it out, this, the color of these clouds are very white. Of course, I'm expecting to have some bleeding from the candy underneath, but I will help out with a little bit of the of color but I'm just doing lightly. I'm not going crazy over. I go lightly and start building up. Okay, so it will give a touch of color and I can increase as much as I want. All this area will be blue, you know, so it will blend great with the color on the bottom, okay? And what I will do is that once this is, um, let's say, protect with 4040, uh, just right after this, I will go back and spray some white again, just to make the highlights very, very bright. If I using only, um, let's say, not too saturated candy, I'm able to build up and make it as deep and as dark as I want, you know. But this always do less than too much, you know. Candy uh, are beautiful and this Caribe Blue is awesome, so. Now you see the, how it changed the color on the candy, I mean on the clouds. I will blend some of the colors and some of the clouds in here. And I will change also the color of the, uh, of the candy for different areas. So to have more warm colors in this area, a little cold in this other section. So I guess this gives you an idea of the process of colorizing um, white with candies and of course this is a back and forth process until you achieve the right effect okay guys keep working on it so hope you like it thanks okay guys i uh, colorized a little bit some of the blues you know especially for this bottom area here on the on the clouds just like my reference here and also uh, I start putting some color on with a uh, grabber orange, you know, which is the, the candy uh, 4654, very subtle. So uh, of course, remember every time I use candy, I use either transparent base or 4050 uh, UBLS clear 
gloss as a binder for the candy. Um, the ratio is probably uh, one to one, you know, an average, sometimes a little bit of reducer just to improve the flow. And then I spray lightly, very lightly, only a mist of the orange, so it colorizes on top of the magenta and it brings together all the colors. And then in some of the areas, just very lightly touch of uh, tequila yellow. I love tequila yellow, how it blends with the, with the orange. And I try to leave this area almost untouched, pretty much just white, the white that I sprayed originally. The colors right now maybe it looks a little dull, it's not reflection and are not combined all the way together yet, but what happened is uh, once I apply 4040 uh, bleed checker just to protect for more bleeding, I can go back on top of that 4040 to enhance some highlights because now this is a good setup, a background color for these clouds and some of the highlights. But I need to go back with a just brighter white to enhance even more. So. This is just part of the process, you know, going back and forth. Uh, now I will seal with 4040, and then I will do final highlights, so then I can move into the actual mermaid design, okay? Remember, this piece has been a mask. The mermaid is still untouched yet, and all the reflections will be right there, so it will be very, very interesting uh, to peel off and work on that area. I will, I will take off a little bit of the head so you, can, you guys can see the hair, you know, that has been drawn there, you know. This is on section, so it's, I need to uh, mask back the background to work on the actual mermaid. So this will be very interesting, so. Okay, let's see what's next. Thank you guys. Okay, now next step is uh, applying 4040. Uh, 4040 is a, a bleed checker, it's a barrier, so it will stop bleeding of the, of the candy and uh, it will work uh, great. It will help to uh, make a brighter highlights on top. But before that, I will peel off the mask, you know, as I showed you earlier. You know, this has been masked off. But I will peel off the whole mask on the full shape of the mermaid. So that way, when we spray the 4040, we are not creating a, an edge around the mask. So it will be everything small and will be very nice to see how it contrasts with it. You will see how the colors will be a lot brighter and blends together once we apply the 4040. Okay, so uh, keep tuning and uh, you will see it. All right, we got the booth running. I have my LPH 80 with a little bit of 4040 bleed checker in it. This is uh, straight out of the bottle. It's already reduced. You don't need to reduce it anymore. It's already thin in viscosity, so this is actually a great gun for that. Uh, and medium coats. You don't want to overly wet this because it will slide on you, especially on a, a vertical surface like this. So all we're looking to do is just kind of put a protective mid coat. We're not really trying to build up any body with this. It's not going to be sprayed like a clear coat. So medium wet coat, that's it. We'll do two coats. Hey guys, good morning. This is uh, another day working in this awesome project. It's, uh, I'm so happy so far with the results. Of course, the process is still going on. But uh, last night we sprayed the uh, 4040 to have um, 
a bleed checker, you know, some barrier to protect from bleeding on the candy, so that's awesome. And even that we still need to add some highlights on top of it, I will move on into the mermaid. And what I will do is I will cut a mask in here. I already have placed a, a transparent mask, which you guys, as you can see here, you know, this is the mask, you can see the difference in color. You know, this is a lot more bright, it's not a finish, but still, you guys can see the difference. So what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, placing this mask and I will just cut around, try to go as precise as possible to have a clean edge. And I will use my swivel knife, which is the exacto, um, uh, 53 series, you know, is awesome because it turns easy, it cuts like butter, the material is great, so everything is going to be fine. So I will be cutting, and once I have the mask uh, cut, I will remove the inside so I can work inside with all the candies and the special effect with the ground metal. Okay, so check it out, uh, be ready for it soon. Thanks. Okay, I've been uh, cutting the mask all around, all the silhouette on the mermaid, but also I've been cutting some sections. If you see it here, I have the fins separate from the main body, the actual hair, and some other areas that separate some sections inside of the mermaid. So I, I still need to cut this little piece left and so you can appreciate how, how I do it and how effective is the use of this kind of a swivel knife. So it'll be make it, uh, very easy, but check it out. So I'm just going and actually cutting. And if I move it my exacto, it will go really easy with no effort really to cut and the curves on those little sections. So I'm going like that all the way. And this is now ready to peel off. So I will show you. So I use cut this section, but you can see the difference now. I have the, the fin section out on mask is protect the background so I can work with my candies all the way in. In this case, I'm just going to do a little bit of shading, the dark tones, and then like a mist of color with candy. So the uh, effect will be absolutely awesome. So check it out. I will keep going in a minute. So, but I just want to show you how to cut and separate those sections. Okay, see you in a moment.